you are gonna make the difference between who wins $1,000 worth of stuff. No pressure. Oh, it's a strike! $1,000 worth of race work stuff. Hey Tristan. Yeah? Did you break your manifold again? It's not broken. What do you mean? <laughs> Jab throw! <laughs> oh, you don't, you don't look happy. Is it, it doesn't sound broken. Oh. Dude, what the hell? You doing anything? Well, yes! Is it as important as showing me the cool new stuff? Couldn't you have waited? I did! That looked boring. This looks really cool. Look what I found when I got here. I've been working on this manifold design for the last few weeks. Um, you've already seen the bottom bit. Yep. It, it was blue last time. It was blue. Right. We were testing the injector mounts. This right, is where right, you came right, up with your right. stupid idea for 24 goddamn injectors. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, so what I've done since last time is I've made it orange. Right. Any other reason? No. Just like the colour better? Yeah, it's orange. Okay. Right. And the next bit was to design this top part. And this, this yep. was the really challenging part, making these runners that um, uh, continued the flow direction coming to trumpets, which would fit under the bonnet. As I said last episode, the flow on the standard manifold comes out and then it does a big like 130 degree bend. It almost bends completely back on itself and that's never gonna make good power. Well, it's never gonna make the best power it possibly can, right? Yeah. So obviously if we can go for a straight runner, that's gonna be better. I've shortened the runners a little bit over what the original runners were. Yeah. That's gonna be better for high RPM because the stock manifold was really made for a 6,000 RPM engine and I'd rather do something like 9,000 RPM if you ask me. 100%. Uh, and now, plenums. I'm working on the plenum design. Um, the, a lot of work is going into the shape of this to try and get the air flowing how I want it to and also clearing the rest of the components in the engine bay. Yep. Uh, which brings me to the next thing. Do you notice anything different? Coils, the bright red <laughs> coils. Now, you know our good friend Kev from 5 Ignite. Yeah. Yeah, he came with a box of 12 coils for us. Good man. These are the Audi R8 ones, um, which are super, super powerful and are going to allow us to run all of the boost. Mint. And now the plenums I've made to make sure we have enough room to clear the coils and obviously a wiring harness and whatever else has to go through there. And after I've done uh, printing the rest of the intake manifold, you know, the rear set of runners and both the plenums, then we can start thinking about the throttle body. Those coils are really nice. Well, they're red. <laughs> they are. And th yeah, they suit the car, obviously. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, aside from being really nice, they actually fit really, really good. Like when you press them down onto the spark plug as hard as they go, there's about a one millimetre gap between the coil and the tube there, which means it is as low as a coil could possibly be. They're really compact on mm. top there. Mm. I was very tempted to make the intake even bigger and come over the top of the coils um, and just have bigger plenums, but uh, I mean, more volume in the plenums was not going to be necessary uh, for any amount of power, really. Hmm. And who wants to make it so you have to pull the whole intake manifold off just to change spark plugs? I mean, that's a kind of Mitsubishi Magna kind of. <laughs> yes, yes. Got a treat today. Uh, Nathan, that has the shorty Land Cruiser with a 1GZ V12 conversion, he sent us a little package. Um, that's the Land Cruiser that's been built by Al from Skid Factory. So, I mean, if you're into V12 conversions, definitely go check out what he's done. It's a pretty cool little car. Now, what he's uh, sent us here is actually the standard rod from a 1GZ V12, rod and piston. Uh, for us to have a look at because of course we haven't stripped this engine down yet so I don't even really know what's inside there except for some pictures we've uh, seen on the internet. I think this was out of an exploded engine but this is one of the rods and pistons that survived. Um, 
Looks pretty pathetic. <laughs> that doesn't look anything like any piston I've ever pulled out of a Toyota engine. The first thing that really catches my eye is these machining marks here. Like it's it's definitely had like a CNC mill come around and and cut this chamber out. It's as if the piston was originally domed for a high compression engine and they've just gone, nah, I changed my mind. Just, nah, just mill that out with the CNC. But you can see the tool path on it. I've never ever ever seen machining tool pathing on a Toyota original piston. That's pretty crazy. Uh, but I definitely think there's room to improve. Um, I know that there's a, one or two forged rods or pistons floating around on the internet or on the market uh, for this engine, but I think they're just really forged copies of this exact rod length and, and size and this exact piston uh, size. But I think there's a lot of things here that I can improve, maybe change some lengths, change some heights, change some, some aspects of the design and come up with something a little less pathetic. But how cool is that? Thanks, Nathan. Thanks, Kid Factory. Keep blowing up engines and sending me the parts. I would have to say that this piston is pure art. Now the problem I've got here is that there's all these heater lines at the back of the engine which are stopping me putting in the second part of the intake manifold. So I'm gonna have to pull all this apart just to get rid of these metal lines which actually pipe all the way down the valley here and put this together, see how it looks. Now obviously we're not going to get rid of this pipe because I do want to have a heater in this car but I am at least going to have to chop it and lengthen it a bit so it clears the new intake manifold design but we'll do that later. Finally, we can see all 12 runners. How huge does that look? And uh, this is a bit that I really wanted to know about, how much room I've got with the design I've made and whether it clears the firewall and all of the other things. So I'm gonna call that a design win, maximize all of the space that we've got, clears everything, there's maybe just uh, you know, one or two brackets here and there that I'll need to work with. And uh, these heater lines down here, I'll definitely have to put some thought into how I'm going to run them. But I'm, I'm convinced everything's gonna fit and work with this design. But to be absolutely sure, I'm gonna get on with printing the rest of these uh, plenum chambers. Uh, so I can put it all together as a complete assembly and uh, see the whole thing. Right, we've just got one thing left to do, and that's give away this $1,000 worth of race work stuff to someone. All right, now, first things first, we gotta tell them what that secret product was. Ladies and gentlemen, carbon fiber sheet. Carbon fiber sheet, there it is. But I tell you what, there's been some great comments about what people can make out of carbon fiber. Yes, yes, and we have the best of them here. The best answers. So we've narrowed it down to four. We've got to come up with a way to decide between these four legends. What are you thinking? Drag race. We've got like shelves of toys up there. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Come for a walk, come for a walk. What can we play? <laughs> Trains, xylophones. Wow. Who plays the best song on a xylophone? Who can spell the best? <laughs> hey, what about this? 10 pin bowling. Miniature. <laughs> Miniature 10 pin bowling. Miniature 10 pin bowling. 
I'm going to kick your ass in this. I can't bowl to save my life to start with, so does it have the bumper bars? Well, yeah, it does. Look, it's got the, it's got the things. No, they're, they're the gutters. Well, I need, well, the gutters. I need the bars to stop the ball going in the gutters. Oh, well, no. Yeah, okay, go on. Yeah, let's go. We'll play some bowling. Bowling. <laughs> Steerrike. No, that's the wrong kind of strike. No, it's not. That's, that's, no, that's baseball strike. Oh. How, how do you say strike in bowling? Strike. It's like an X or something, isn't it? Well. Like a no deal. Yeah. If you get three strikes in a row, I think it's called a turkey. I'm pretty sure turkey's like farm animals or something. Yeah, but strike, is, like... when you, strike is when you hit someone. I mean, you know. They're just words. Do you think we should throw this in with the prize? <laughs> now, there's, there's one other problem. I've got four of the best answers and there's only two of us. We need more people. Hey, more people. Bowl. Bowling. You are going to make the difference between who wins $1,000 worth of stuff. No pressure. Choose one. Right, whoever gets a high score wins. We're not going to do a full game, just one shot. One shot. And if it draws, then of course we'll go to a decider. Go on. Come on. You're going to want to see this up close. One, two, three. Oh, that's Four. 10 minus four, six. <laughs> It'll be just Oh, come on. Oh, oh, <laughs> I think you need to oh, <laughs> <laughs> I think someone Can someone with more over. confident <laughs> fingers do this Oh, it's not even on the dot. You right. loser. You loser. All I've got to do is beat six. You suck. You suck. Six. <laughs> <laughs> oh my oh. God. That's a nine, whatever they call that in bowling. What are they call Nine. 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 No, it's a nine. <laughs> I know exactly what I'm talking about. I didn't know you could push it harder like that. I was relying on gravity. So I'm sorry, whoever's in my pocket. I just ruined it for you. All right, this one's it's a big one. Oh, oh it's a strike! It's a strike. Oh my God, oh my God. Who have you got? Send it over. G Lee Me is, well, that's his handle. Oh good. It could be his name. I hope so. I hope his name's Jilly Me. Yeah. Jilly Me said the mystery part is the carbon fiber sheet. Correct. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll use it on my freshly imported Evo 9 wagon. Oh, God. I didn't know Evo 9s came in wagons. Uh, I didn't either. I hope it's fast. The fuel flap is covered in the cheapest fake carbon wrap Japan could find. <laughs> so don't you worry, buddy. You are not only getting real carbon fiber wrap, it's not even wrap, not. real carbon <laughs> fiber sheet, you are getting so many race car stuffs that your Evo wagon is gonna make a goddamn billion horsepower. A billion. A billion. Gilly me, you win $1,000 plus worth of Raceworks gear and a bowling game. And a bowling game, congrats. So thank you everybody for watching this episode and also thank you for everybody commenting and joining in the competition. There were heaps of really funny and awesome comments, but ultimately there can only be one winner, right? Um, of course, thanks to Raceworks and Premier Auto Trade Racing and Performance for the parts to give away. Um, that's unbelievable and Geely me. Thank you so much for entering and we hope you enjoy your parts. Now, please get in contact with us. Uh, the best way is hopping onto Facebook and going to the Quick Shift TV Facebook page, send us a message and we will get all of this stuff straight out to you. Uh, that's it. Next episode coming soon. See you there.